afternoon everyone so time for another video um what i've started to do is i've started to take down a record of all the requests that i'm getting for certain videos um so this video is going to be about virtual domains um or vdoms the commonly known as um it's been a highly requested um topic so i'm just going to um kick off what our classes um a new series, uh, I, um, call, I'm going to call it the Why series, and it's going to be geared about answering questions that a customer might ask. Why do I need VDOMs? Why do I need a NAC? Um, that kind of agenda. So let's crack on and um, let's um, take apart VDOMs and, and why a company might need them. Okay, so in the initial stage of a 40 gate, the VDOMs are not enabled. So this topology would look something like this. You would have your gates and then you would have an ISP. Uh, you might have a second ISP as well. Um, so just pop that there. That would connect into one one. And one two depending on the model but not, don't need to go into too much detail on that so one 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 two and then you would have below it you generally have your LAN your local area network um i don't know maybe that connects into internal one on the gate it doesn't really matter so um what a vdom will do is let's say that you've got your um isp one and isp2 coming in but you actually want segmented tables let's say routing tables administrators that kind of thing what VDOMs allow you to do is to essentially slice the device in half, like a piece of cake. Um, most models start with the ability to have up to 10 VDOMs on them. Um, I've run platforms in the past that have got up to 500 different VDOMs on them. Um, I'll explain how that works in a minute. So if you look at this diagram here now, you can see that what I've essentially done is split the firewall in half using VDOMs. So the blue box is customer one and the red box is customer two. Um, so WAN links going, so um, interfaces that are um, available physical interfaces that are virtual interfaces that are available on the FortiGate firewall um, have to be instructed what VDOM they are going into. Um, so what I've done here is I've put WAN1 in the blue VDOM and WAN2 in the red VDOM and again LAN1 in the blue VDOM and LAN2 in the red VDOM. One thing that you will see that I have done is, is that the LAN subnet on both the blue and the red VDOM is the same. I've done this purposely. Um, the reason for that is that uh, VDOMs have separate routing tables um, and um, unless you're using inter VDOM links or some other trickery to get the, the, the VDOMs to be able to speak to each other, they cannot. So therefore you can have um, the same IP address range in um, different VDOMs on the same FortiGate firewall. So a bit of a more common architecture here, um, starting to see this more frequently. Um, what um, consultants are doing is they're placing all the WAN links in one VDOM. So in this case, their blue VDOM and then they're creating separate VDOMs for separate customers. So the green VDOM 
um, and the red VDOM again. Uh, each VDOM has separate routing table, separate policies, separate administrators. Um, everything is is separated out pretty much, but they can be configured to speak to each other with VDOM links. So another topology that um, I'm seeing quite frequently is um, this. So again, all the WAN links in one VDOM, then the enterprise environment, the office environment, that kind of thing in its own VDOM, and then an OT environment in the third VDOM. Um, just to touch on this a little bit, some of the OT specialist providers might frown upon this a little bit, so do I. Um, really, within when it comes to OT, you should have internal segmentation firewalls that are physical appliances that um, depicts the region, let's say, between the enterprise and OT. There's a, there's a physical gate at the border, um, but um, not everybody has infinite money. Um, certainly these days with the uh, the current climate, so um, I'm seeing um, partners leveraging um, uh, VDOMs to achieve the the segmentation between OT and IT. So, what some of the bigger uh, security providers ISPs will be doing, and I've been doing successfully for for many years is they will buy, a good example would be like an 1800F, uh, have 250 different customers on it. So if you look here, you've got the green, blue, red, purple. Think of it like a piece of cake. They're just uh, carving up the resource of the appliance, usually in a HA pair. There'll be an interface on the one side and there'll be an interface on the LAN side. Sometimes the interface on the LAN side is connects up to like an MPLS, VPLS network, um, and they will sell a piece of that firewall as a firewall as a service. Um, keeps the licensing costs down um, and uh, is is very, very profitable, certainly when you've, you've got tens of thousands of customers um, on the platform, like some of the, the companies that I've worked with. So just to wrap things up a little bit here, uh, VDOMs, um, split your appliance uh, into pieces. Think of it like a piece of cake. Um, even the entry-level appliances these days come with um, a maximum of 10 VDOMs. If you look here, um, 40F has support for 10 virtual domains out of the box. This, as you go up to the more, the bigger boys, this scales massively. If you look here, 2600F, 500 VDOMs. Um, I don't think it goes um, beyond 500 with any model. No, um, but yes, yeah, certainly the internet service providers will have uh, 2600Fs, multiple of them um, with you know 500 customers on there and they'll, they'll be selling them as a service. Um, common architecture, all one links go into it's their own VDOM, and then you might have your enterprise environment, and then your another one, very common one that I see is your guest Wi-Fi. Keeps them nice and separate, which is you definitely want. You don't want to be relying on software to do the segmentation between your enterprise and guests just completely segment them from a, a policy, routing and administration perspective. Um, the only gotcha with, with VDOMs is that some of the virtual 40 gate appliances, the VM01, the VM02, the VM04, the VM08, the subscription based ones, they now do not come with VDOMs they are VDOM capable, but you need to purchase a separate software SKU to enable VDOM functionality. Um, if anyone has any questions about VDOMs, then please free, feel free to ask in the comments. Hit that like and subscribe button and let me know what other videos you would like to see. As always, thanks for your time.